In this section, we move on to other graphs. So we're going to look at several different types of graphs uh, that can be used to represent data. So one of these graphs is called the stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot breaks each value or each data value of a quantitative data set into two pieces. A stem, typically for the highest place value, and a leaf for the last uh, place value. It provides a way to list all the data values in a compact form. The values under the stem should be placed in numerical order. So we want to definitely underline that. So let's say we have the following data set. We're going to construct the stem leaf plot. So remember, the leaves will be the last digits and the stem will be the first one, two, or, or in some cases three digits. So 23 uh, splits easily. The stem is two, the leaf is three. So this number here, that's our 20, so that's our stem two. Three would be 23. 102, the 10 is the stem the 2 is the leaf, so we represent that as 10 to 2, and so on. So basically, we can see that our the stem will have a range, um, looking at our lowest value is 12, so the range is going to be from 1, our highest value is 111 to 11, so we list all the numbers from 1 to 11. Now the leaves are just the last digits, so 23 becomes 2, 3. 102 becomes 10, 2, 28 becomes 2 and 8, 19 is 1 and 9, and so on. And so we have this new graphical representation, which is called a stem leaf plot. And 8 has, since the 80s are not represented here, we still write down the 8, but just leave it blank. Um, just to kind of provide a, uh, some type of continuity there. And then you can just examine the data. We can see for this data set, the 20s are kind of the, what's called the mode. It means that it has the modal class. It has the largest number of data values. And it seems like most of the data values are gathered um, around the first four stems. And so that's a stem lead plot. Uh, there's a, one of the, an example for you to try. Uh, this example, once again, as I mentioned, the answers are in the, uh, at the end of the document. Our next graph is called a dot plot. So a dot plot, uh, think of it as a hybrid between a histogram and a stem and leaf plot. Each quantitative data value becomes a dot or a point that is placed above the appropriate class values. However, instead of rectangles or bars, we're, we're going to construct our list of data values using dots. So it's just kind of a rapid way to sort of assess the data values that are provided to you. Um, so here we have uh, cars and their fuel economy. So what we do is we notice our smallest data value is 16. The largest data value is 40, so we're going to we will list all the data values uh, when you write down your x-axis so far. The range I made is from 15 to 43. And then we just plot dots. So at 16, right above 16, you just place a dot. 27, right above 27, you place a dot. 30, right above 30, you place a dot. 31, place a dot. And you repeat this process, and eventually your dot plot will emerge. And we can see that um, the class with the most data values is 31. We do have some extreme values. These values are typically called outliers. We can't confirm yet if they're outliers. We will learn how to do that later on. But 
these values stand out. This value at 16 has a really low fuel mileage. So that's a real gas guzzler. It's the Ashton, Aston Martin V8. So that's a gas guzzler, definitely. Whereas this data value has a very high fuel economy. And so that is a hybrid vehicle. So it gets more um, miles for the minimal gas that it uses. So this is our dot plot. And then we have an example for you to try, construct the dot plot. Now we look at what's called the parental chart. So this is our third graph. The parental chart, it's a bar graph um, that is constructed to determine the vital few in the data set. It was developed by an Italian statistician, Alfredo Pareto, who used it to study income inequality in his home country of Italia. But there's other uses for it. So we're going to go ahead and just look at the process for constructing um, a product chart. Well, let's. here's the data that's given. So survey is conducted as to reasons why students are late to class. So this is the data set. So our first step is we will rearrange the data set. We want to arrange it from the highest to lowest frequency. Okay, then we will draw the x and y axes and we will list these categories. However, we will list them in order, as I, as I mentioned, from the longest to shortest. And then we just want to ensure there's enough space to draw the, the bar. We put the frequencies on the y-axis and then we just draw the bar. So here's our example. And for a parental chart, the bars don't have to touch. And let's stretch this out a bit. So we have um, the data set the data value with the highest frequency is parking. So parking that has the highest um, frequency. Then comes traffic 20. Then family obligations, other transportation, sick, lack of interest. And so uh, what the parental chart does is, is it allows someone to analyze the data set. And we can see that the two largest complaints are parking and traffic as to why students are late. And then uh, whoever's performing this study can then take action, at least on the parking aspect. Traffic may be a challenge, but uh, they may just try to find a way for people to use public transportation as opposed to driving. Okay, and now we have an example for you to try using the Pareto chart. Now we look at what's called our pie graph. So a pie graph divides a circle into sections based on the percentage of frequencies for given categories. I think most people have seen a pie graph displayed in the newspaper or online um, regarding data types. So in this example, uh, we have the following. It says uh, movie genre data is provided below uh, from students who attend a local community college in regards to their favorite movie genre. It's a survey that's been conducted. And we want to construct a pie graph. Well, step one would be to draw the circle. Step two, we compute the percentages of each category. We do this in a very similar manner. So um, let's kind of just walk through the process again. So to compute the percentage, do the following. Find the sum of the frequencies. We're going to add up all the frequencies. We label it N. Uh, then we divide each frequency by N. So, and then finally change the result to percentage. So in this example, if we add up all the frequencies, N is 80. We're looking at comedy, so we're going to take 28 divided by 80, that's 0.35. Move the decimal two spaces to the right, write down your percent sign. So that would be 35% for the comedies. And just repeat that for all the other frequencies. And then finally, when we draw the circle, um, if you're just drawing this by hand, you just want to measure out. So remember, a quarter of a circle is 
So just do the best of your skill sets. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but try to draw the, the sections of each circle using your percents. 50% will be half, 25% will be a quarter. So you want to kind of do your best to estimate how to construct these um, pie graphs. So we can see that of the, the survey, 35% the of the students prefer comedies, 17% prefer dramas, 11% documentaries, 23% action, and 14% romance. And we have, once again, an example for you to try to go ahead and construct a pie graph. And as I mentioned uh, before, the uh, answers are at the end of the document. And now we come to our last chart. This is called the time series chart. So that's a graph that represents data that, over, that occur over a specific interval of time. So to draw this graph, it's a line graph. We draw and label the x, y axis. We represent time on the x axis and the other data values on the y axis. We plot our points and then we connect the points with straight lines. So our example here is we're just going to look at a random day in each of these years and we examine the price <coughs> for uh, stock in Tesla. Stock is just ownership in uh, the company Tesla, which produces electric vehicles. So we pick a random day in the year, 2014, 265 is the price, 2015, 196, and then uh, earlier this year, the one share of stock in Tesla reached $1,000. So let's go through the process of graphing. So once again, we just plot our points. 2014, it's 265, 2015, 196, etc. We connect the points with straight lines, and then we just look for trends, and we can see that from 2014 to around 2018, the price really wasn't changing too much. Then it dipped in 2019, and then over the, the past year, it's just been rising. The value has been rising astronomically to 1,000. Uh, we have an example for you to try. It's dealing with the uh, population of Siberian tigers. You go ahead and work out that example. And as I mentioned before, all of the answers are at the end of the document. So you can check those answers there. All right, we'll go ahead and stop right here. Thank you.